All right. Welcome. Welcome to the, uh, yeah, 30 days to Easter, day 16. Uh, that's one thing. And the creative mind training is following up with, um, say, a lot of holiness today. A lot of saints are, uh, say, present here today. So that's really lovely. Um, we'll see what that means today. I love that. So your holiness is obvious, that's for sure. You were all declared holy uh, always. So there's nothing to gain in that sense. Your holiness is guaranteed. Um, so now be that saint. <laughs> be that holiness, your holiness. Be your holiness. Um, so today is um, yeah, chapter 16. Uh, I used, uh, say, a very specific aspect from uh, chapter 16, which is true empathy uh, as a statement, as an, as an idea, as a reality to you. And uh, empathy is yeah, it's, it's like great, like your social, it's a social um, attribute, you could say, in human thinking. But how is this in uh, a true perspective, you could say? Now, in chapter 16, it's um, very well uh, put, very clearly put how to do this, how to not actually know what empathy is at all. And, and here we go again. So it's like we, we have ideas about what something is, and then it, it is nothing. We, we were thinking it was this way and it has nothing to do with it. It has absolutely nothing to do with empathy, what we think empathy is. And at the same time, you can, you can extend empathy in every situation, but in a different way than you possibly think. Now, that is, that's a, a wonderful theme to, uh, to use here because so basically what we discover in empathy is like what are you empathizing with and that is basically the suffering of someone or the sickness of someone or the lack of someone or the anxiety of someone now if if i would be empathetic to that i i would say oh my god oh i'm so oh that's so terrible that's not so nice that you have this and blah 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 and at the same time, confirming that it would be a reality, you know, confirming that, uh, yes, I I understand what you're saying. I had it last week and I tried to bring it into a temporal association, I could say. It's like you try to re relate to it uh, in your time construct. And this is not what empathy is. This is what illusions making is. So it's like now you're part of this one's dream that you just confirmed. You're part of the misery. No, that's not really what you want, is it? And and so it is like in your uh, empathetic, um, say, intentions, uh, you need help because uh, it's okay to feel for your brother, to feel the pain of your brother, but you're not going to empathize with it. No, you actually go and do something else with it. And and the answer to that is is a bit of the same always. Like before anything, you go within. You just stop and you go within. Because that's where always the solution will be. And what is going within is, is in fact, handing the situation over. Like admitting that you have no idea how to respond to it it's like okay i would i have a tendency now to to go with this what is presented to me and and feel with it and all this and and apparently that's not what is asked of me if i want to become free of this say sphere of uh, denial of limitation of lack so that's where chapter 16 comes in and yeah this is this is amazing because you can see like whenever you have a tendency to to associate with someone in a certain lack of limitation you become part of it it becomes true to you too and um, so in other words you enter in 
again into an say a detour into fear into limitation into a construct where you cannot get out of now to prevent yourself from doing that you stop and bring it say go within to to let something else occur to immediately hand it over in in capable hands that actually can change this into something helpful not only for you but also for your brother so the, you could say true empathy has one outcome and that is the release of self-identity that is the release of the bondage of space and time that is the release of uh, the construct that you thought you were meeting each other so when that releases you could say that empathy takes place and that is the release is the healing is the recognition of there's only one thing going on and it's me becoming free of any kind of limitation i recognize my freedom in all situations by allowing something that knows to show me instead of i i already know how to respond to it so um, just to sit back and listen to uh, a part of this um, chapter i thought it was great to listen to um, true empathy as it is in the word text manuscripts so true empathy is um, the second i think it's the second um, paragraph of, of second section of of the chapter so let's let's listen to that for it's five minutes or so yes yeah, uh, section b true empathy here we go a Course in Miracles, Urtext Manuscripts, Complete 7-Volume Combined Edition, Volume 1, Chapter 16. Section B, True Empathy. True empathy is of him who knows what it is. You will learn his interpretation of it if you let him use your capacity for strength and not for weakness. He will not desert you. But be sure that you desert not him. Humility is strength in this sense only to recognize and accept the fact that you do not know is to recognize and accept the fact that he does know. You are not sure that he will do his part because you have never yet done yours completely. You will not know how to respond to what you do not understand. Be tempted not in this and yield not to the ego's triumphant use of empathy for its glory. The triumph of weakness is not what you would offer to a brother. And yet you know no triumph but this. This is not knowledge and the form of empathy that you would bring it about is so distorted that it would imprison what it would release. The unredeemed cannot redeem, yet they have a redeemer. Attempt to teach him not. You are the learner. He is the teacher. Do not confuse your role in his, for this will never bring peace to anyone. Offer your empathy to him, for it is his perception and his strength that you would share and let him offer you his strength and his perception to be shared through you. The meaning of love is lost in any relationship which looks to weakness and hopes to find it there. The power of love, which is the, its meaning, lies in the strength of God, which hovers over it and blesses it silently by enveloping it in healing wings let this be and do not try to substitute your miracle for this we once said that if a brother asks a foolish thing of you to do it but be certain that this does not mean to do a foolish thing that would hurt either him or you for what would hurt one will hurt the other foolish requests are foolish for the simple reason that they conflict because they contain an element of specialness. Only the Holy Spirit recognizes foolish needs as well as real ones, and he will teach you how to meet both without losing either. 
You will be able to do this only in secrecy. And you will find that by meeting the needs of one, you do not jeopardize another because you keep them separate and secret from each other. This is not the way, for it leads not to light and truth. No needs will long be left unmet if you leave them all to him whose function is to meet them. This is his function and not yours. He will not meet them secretly, for he would share everything you give through him, and that is why he gives it. What you give through him is for the whole sonship, not for part of it. Leave him his function, for he will fulfill it, if you but ask him to enter your relationships and bless them for you. That's always interesting to, to listen to, and you, I have always like, I, I gotta listen to it again, I gotta listen to it again, and which is great. So the one thing that comes to me to share is this, is that uh, there's a no situation um, that you actually know what is the best for everyone involved. Like you might think that you're able to decide for for yourself and for maybe one or two extra but you never know how what you would have to choose in order for it to be beneficial to the whole sonship you could say now here is where uh, the holy spirit comes in to to do exactly that like that's such a relief to um, to wait for the answer and to wait for the possibility that something good will come out of it that is beneficial to all and you're recognizing your equality and your connectedness with your brother and no matter no matter what the outcome is it must be the best like you can be sure that it will um, give you a sense of connectedness when the answer comes and and that would be so much better than anything else and sometimes it is just that you don't say anything at all or who knows how it will be like but this is what I've seen seen happen a lot it's like you give it away and then actually it, it will it will solve you know it will solve itself but w one thing for sure is that your concern about it or your your occupation with it is comes to an end suddenly is released suddenly is gone and and you're free to stay at peace Oh, that's that's amazing you know that's amazing because uh, imagine how you did that um, say in your earlier days you could say before you heard this or before you recognized there was an alternative you would be occupied with a certain problem and you couldn't let go of it because you're still walking around with it and waiting for it to be solved or doing anything that you can do to solve it well actually the place where you where you perceive the problem yeah, the place itself is not real. So your your problem solving will just create more uh, problems instead of uh, being a real solution. Now, and that's that's saving time incredibly. You know, it's like you don't have to become preoccupied with anything. You can stay in your peace of mind. And it's like, wow, it's in good hands. Something good will come out of this. It's like this will pass, and but it will also be representing something that is beneficial to all of us, to each, each one of us. Recognizing it as one, basically. So now uh, my idea was to, um, uh, to read one of the miracle prayers related to the idea of uh, holiness of yeah, I call it saintship today, uh, holiness. So I'm going to uh, check out one of the prayers. 264, yes, wonderful. <clears throat> I am surrounded by the love of God. Father, you stand before me and behind me, beside me. In the place I see myself and everywhere I go. You are in all the things I look upon, in the sounds I hear, 
in every hand that reaches for my own, in you time disappears and place becomes a meaningless belief. For what surrounds your son, keeps him safe, is love itself. There is no source but this, and nothing is that does not share its holiness, that stands beyond your one creation, or without the love which holds all things within itself. Father, your son is like yourself. We come to you in your own name today to be at peace within your everlasting love. My brothers, join me in this today. This is salvation's prayer. Must we not join in what will save the world along with us? So this is really our empathy prayer, you could say. So I'm reading it one more time. I'm surrounded by the love of God. Father, you stand before me, behind me, and beside me. In the place I see myself and everywhere I go. You are in all the things I look upon. In the sounds I hear and every hand that reaches for my own. In you time disappears and place becomes a meaningless belief. For what surrounds your son and keeps him safe is love itself. There is no source but this. And nothing is that does not share its holiness. That stands beyond your one creation or without the love which holds all things within itself. Father, your Son is like yourself. We come to you in your own name today to be at peace within your everlasting love. My brothers, join with me in this today. This is salvation's prayer. Must we not join in what will save the world along with us? Père, tu te tiens devant et derrière moi, à mes côtés, à l'endroit où je me vois moi-même, moi-même et partout où je vois. Tu es dans toutes les choses que je regarde, dans les sons que j'entends et dans chaque main qui se tend pour prendre la mienne. En toi, le temps disparaît et le lieu devient une croyance insignifiante car ce qui entoure ton fils et le garde en sécurité est l'amour même. Il n'y a de source que celle-ci et il n'est rien qui ne partage sa sainteté, qui se tienne au-delà de toi, soit création ou soit sans amour, qui tient toute chose en lui-même. Père, ton Fils est pareil à toi-même. Nous venons à toi en, ta propre, en ton propre nom aujourd'hui, pour être en paix dans ton amour éternel. Mes frères, Joignez-vous à moi en cela aujourd'hui. Ceci est la prière du salut. Ne devons-nous pas nous joindre en ce qui sauvera le monde et nous aussi All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining and, and coming to the place where it's still you know, where it's just still, where it, well, everything is calmed down, all the ideas, all the ideas of what it could be, should be, must be, and did not be, or whatever. <laughs> so it's all, that is all gone. In this one moment that we come together, in this one moment that we actually realize this moment, 
deeply in ourselves. Like the miracle is happening. It's not by your doing, it's a spontaneous occurrence and it's actually occurring. How lovely is that? So it's so great. I love I love that. I love to, to see that happen. All right, so and this is the first part of the um, moment together. So this, the next part where we step right into now is our um, sainthood. Um, interesting idea. So let me tell you a couple of things. It's like, okay, so this also this idea came spontaneously to me, but then and when it came to me, I was like, okay, so how is that going to look? Um, someone was asking, well, I'm curious, like, what kind of saint do you think you are? <laughs> it's like, well, I actually have no ideas about that in form. Um, but um, it's like the first association that comes to me is, is coming from, say, sitting a couple of years next to master teacher. Uh, him, he called me Lancelot like Lancelot wow okay yeah a knight yeah I can see a bit of that in me yeah yeah but I know not sure um, I'm, yeah who knows so that that was an uh, say part that inspired me to actually go into the principle of Lancelot you could say it's like what does Lancelot represent like how how would you be able to fight a dragon how would you be able to, um, yeah, to find the Holy Grail? In fact, that was the whole setup. How can I protect the king? And and all these, like he was part of King Arthur's uh, legacy. He was he was the first knight. He was, say, the head of the round table, where everyone put his sword on the table just to start discussing things and making agreements. And um, so that's a lovely idea. You see behind me is actually a round table. With, uh, so I'm getting into it now. And, <laughs> and um, before you know it, the horses are running right through here. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. Um, so that is Lancelot. So the other thing is, so the Lancelot principle is then, you could say, how can you, how can you conquer uh, a dragon? So if I think something outside of me is threatening me, I I can never win. You know, I can never yeah conquer a, a dragon. So um, fighting a dragon would be um, becoming stronger than the dragon to eventually like get over it with him. But that would not be the solution. So recognizing that this dragon doesn't have any power that I that I'm giving him. If I don't give him any power, he won't have any. Like recognizing that the source of what you perceive is in you and um, that none of that is real. Then you can easily say conquer a dragon because you recognize the meaninglessness of, of the whole idea. Thank you. 